thank the Lord for this Sunday, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank the Lord for the pastor of this house, our pastor bishop, my friend, Pastor Willie J. Barr, Jr. Uh, we also have in attendance um, our chairman of the deacon board, Aaron Williams. Hallelujah. And then we also have in attendance our vice chairman of Sunday school, who you heard from the Sunday school lesson this morning, Deacon Carlton, Br Amen. Carlton Brown. So we thank the Lord for these men who continue to be faithful to the ministry. Hallelujah. Uh, we have our trustees upstairs and we're working together behind the scenes, making yes. sure that this church is, uh, is taken care of and we can continue to come before you all with the word of God. So today we'll be talking, uh, we'll be coming out of Matthew, as Bishop said, Matthew 25, and I'll be reading verses 14 uh, through 30. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, and I'll be reading, picking up at verses 14 through 30. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servant and delivered unto them goods. And he, one he gave five talents to another two and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had two, he also gained two. But he that received one and digged in the earth and hid the Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants come and reckoned with them. And so he that received five talents came and bought five talents, saying, Lord, thou delivered to me five talents. Behold, I gained beside five talents more. Gave him ten back. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. He also that received two talents, he came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I gave two other talents beside them. So he returned to the Lord four. He doubled it. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Thou Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. When he had received the one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there has, has thou hast this done. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, Thou knowest that I, thou reap where I sow not, and gather where I not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it to him that had ten talents. For unto everyone that have shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But for him that have not shall be taken away, even that which he have. And cast ye the unprofitable servant, into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Uh, the grass withers and the flower fadeth, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. And I would like to use for a subject today, use what God has given you. Use what God has given you. The Bible says, even so that faith, if it has not works, is dead alone. Another translation, faith without works is dead. Proper faith will produce proper works. I read an interesting statistic that said 100% of the ministry is done by 10% of the people. 100% of the giving is done by 20% of the people. So my question is, what are the other 90 or 80% doing? See, God commands us to put an effort behind our faith. When we make the effort, God performs the work through us. Faith with works moves God to action in our lives and circumstances. But God requires that we take a step. Church, understand this. Nothing in this life is free. Everything comes with a cost. And besides, when something is free or easily attained, many of us don't cherish or respect it. Yeah, that's, right. that's why most children don't respect what they have been given because they have never earned it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until you began to work by the sweat of your brow, yeah. through blood, sweat, and tears, when you began to truly appreciate what you have. 
Getting an education requires effort. Mm -hmm. Buying this, ha this house or car requires effort, yes. yeah. work. So I appreciate my blessings because they require something of me. Mm -hmm. So because they require something of me and I appreciate what God has given to me, I keep my house clean. Okay. I keep my yard kept. Bless you. I keep my car clean Bless and I keep my clothes pressed because these blessings did not come easy. They required something of me. Amen, somebody. My father lives in Randallstown, and he lived in a, back in King Park's estate. And he tells me that many of the houses in the neighborhood are falling apart. So they had a meeting to ask, why are these houses falling apart? Why are these yards so unkept? And the consensus came back that many of the parents had passed on uh -huh. and they left these homes uh -huh. to their children who did not appreciate it. Wow. So because they did not have to pay for that house, they did not keep the house. Wow. And many of them have lost the house because they couldn't even pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. so again, if you don't earn it, many times you don't appreciate it. Yeah. But let me be clear, never put the gift above the giver of the gift. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Amen. God deserves all the honor and the glory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, well, where would I be? Hallelujah. I have three witnesses in here. Where would we be if hallelujah. God had not been on our side? Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. Nevertheless, it never ceases to amaze me how many folks want something from nothing. Yeah. Nothing from nothing equals nothing. And how many people have opted for a hand out as opposed as a hand up? A hand out will keep you per 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 continuously asking for more. A hand up will allow you to grow and grind and get ahead in this thing called life. So you are now in a position to offer someone else a hand up. Never forget where you have come from. But that's a topic for another day. Don't ever forget. Never forget where you've come from. Hallelujah. Allow me to be clear. Everyone needs help at times. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. We all have needed help at times. Yeah. But to live a life constantly needing others or social programs when you are able is ungodly. It. It's downright sinful. Unless you are handicapped truly disabled or elderly or very poor, my question today is why aren't we working? Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen or ouch. Amen. I know young folks who have chosen to live a life of not working. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the blind or the lame. Amen. I'm talking about folks who have used the system because they don't want to use their talents. Yeah. And for us, me included, who likes to enable, God is not pleased with that either. Mm -hmm. Constantly enabling only hurts those who are not helping themselves. Right. Yeah. And when we constantly enable, we are in essence acting as God in another person's life. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, thou shalt have no other God before me. Yeah. Church, it's time we begin to use our talents. Mm -hmm. And I mean exhaust. Use it. Exhaust. Use what God has given you. So walk with me around the text. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a trip. He called together his servants and gave them money to invest for him while he was gone. Until Jesus comes, in essence. God has given each of us management over his resources, his time, his money, his gifts, and his abilities. He gave five bags of gold to one two bags of gold to another, and one bag of gold to the last person, yeah. dividing its proportions to their abilities. Yeah. And then he went away on a trip. Yeah. The distribution of resources given in proportion, some receive greater proportions. Too much given, much is expected, much is required. All, of our pro all are appropriate for each individual, and proportions are determined by your abilities. Proven faithfulness, no one is given more than they can handle. 
But it never ceases to amaze me how many people who don't use or mismanage what they have and expect more. That's right. Amen, somebody, or ouch. If you cannot appropriately use what you have been given, why are you asking God for more? To only waste? Thus, the servant who received five bags of gold began immediately to invest the money, and he soon doubled it. The servant with two bags of gold went out, went right out to work, and he doubled the money, returning back four. But the servant who received one bag of gold dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money for safekeeping. He hid it his talent as opposed to using it. Amen, somebody. So my first point, are you doing what you have been given? Are you, what are you doing with what you have been given? Are you investing God's resources for a greater return? See, when you place what you have in the master's hand, it will work. Yes, it will. If it does not work, then God is a lie. And we know one thing, church. God cannot lie. Are you serving others? Are you supporting God's work with your time and your talent? Are you building up others? God knows our people need leadership and guidance in this crazy world today. Or are you squandering the very talents God has given you? Are you sitting and soaking and waiting for pie from the sky? I heard a comedian say one time, folks don't want jobs. He said, and too many of us who want a job, we don't go look for a job. No, that's right. And he said, it's like this. You sit home all day, and you wait for that at the door. And when you ask, who is it? It's job. <laughs> we know it does not work that way. Amen. You have to get up and go out there and look for that job. And I'm a Witness, when you take a step, God will take the rest. Yes, he will. He will. Are you failing to use your gifts and abilities? Nothing from nothing equals nothing. So after a long time, that master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used their talents. What have you done with the talent of gold I have given you? God will hold all of us accountable for his resources. God expects that we use our talents when we use what God has given us. It is expected that they will bear fruit. It is expected that God's kingdom will increase through our faithful stewardship. Just like God told Moses to use what you have in your hand and that rod opened the power, opened the Red Sea. And the rod through the power was opened by the power of God. Mm -hmm. God is telling you today, use what I have given you. Mm -hmm. And it too will part the red seas in your life. And with God, it does not take much at all. Deacon said it this morning at Sunday school lesson. Samson killed a thousand with one jawbone of an ass. It does not take much from God. He always wants to subtract Just so you won't think you did the work. Amen, somebody. But a step of faith will produce mighty works for the kingdom of God. But the requirement is a step of faith. It takes an action from you. Church, there is no pie coming from the sky. There is no genie in the bottle. But there is the most high God who wants to work through you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Mm -hmm. And so he had five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou hast delivered to me five talents. I have gained beside them five talents. Mm -hmm. More. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, right there is a reason to rejoice. Mm -hmm. Faithful stewardship honors God. Mm -hmm. God is exalted through your faithfulness. Faithfulness and small things open the door for greater responsibilities. Before you go big, be faithful over the little. 
Amen, somebody. Before you go big, be faithful over the little. There is an increased intimacy with God because he can now trust you with his plan. Amen, somebody. Now God can trust you with a bigger gift. If you show him the faithfulness over the smaller gift. Amen, somebody. Verse 22 states, he also that had two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. So, Bishop, in essence, he returned back to the master for his Lord said unto him, Be well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Now enter into the joy of the Lord. Point two, God values quality over quantity. Amen, somebody. God values quality over quantity. There are situations where one will all where one will always matter more than the multiple. For instance, drinking water, you want quality over quantity. We have all the water in the world, but if it is polluted, it becomes unsafe to drink. And it doesn't matter how much of that water you drink, it's still polluted. So in essence, you want a good quality glass of water. Amen, somebody. The first two servants received the same reward. That shows you that God's ways are not like our ways. Let that sink in. Man rewards according to the majority. The winner, who has the most, who has the bigger house, who has the better car, who has the bigger, bigger bank account, etc., etc., etc. But God rewards according to your faithfulness and your obedience. Faithfulness and effort, not outcome. Because God designs, decides the outcome. God rewards not according to your performance, but according to your faithfulness. Right there is shouting. So you're not responsible for the end work. God is responsible for the outcome. Let that sink in. One plant digging another waters, but God is the one who brings about the increase. The outcome of this ministry strictly belongs to the Lord. The outcome of Dalton Baptist Church strictly belongs to the Lord. But what God does expect from us is be obedience to place what we have in his faithful hand. Whatever God has called you to do, be faithful over it. If he called you to preach, you preach. If he called you to teach, you teach. If he called you to usher, you usher. If he called you to sing, you best to get on that choir and sing. I'm telling you right now, I don't care if it's two people up there, you be counted amongst the two. I don't care if it's one person on the other side of this platform preaching. I'm going to preach to that one person because I'm going to use the talent and gifting that God has given me. And when you place your talent in the hand of the good master, my God, my God, when you place your talent in the hand of the good master, watch what God will do. Watch what he will do. I know of God who took Gideon, hallelujah somebody, he was a farmer, he said, I'm the least of my family. And God said, you man of valor, I need you to go back and destroy that army. God told Samson, grab the jaw of an ass, of an ass. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. God doesn't need a lot. He just needs you to take that one step of faith. Hallelujah, Hallelujah somebody. The lives and souls of others are depending on your obedience. Amen. Let that sink in. The lives and soul of others are depending on our obedience. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 9, 11, 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 9 through 11 says it this way. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. We persuade men, but we all well known to God, and all trusts are well known in your consciousness. Verse 24 says, then he, uh -huh. back to our text, Matthew 25, 24 says, 
Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, therefore thou hast in thine is that in thine. My last point, don't waste your potential. You only have one life to live. Don't waste your potential. You only have one life to live. Wasted potential, D. Wasted potential. This servant hid the master's resources out of fear. Fear of failure has paralyzed most Christians from achieving what God has for you. And many of us listen to the voice of fear rather than the voice of faith. What if I'm inadequate? What if I'm not good enough? What if I, like Moses, stutter? What if I'm like Gideon, just a farmer? What if I used to be very judgmental and persecute the church like Paul? What if I don't have enough education like the fishermen that Jesus chose? What if they don't like me? The big what if settles in our mind and we become paralyzed and not doing anything. This servant was different and self-centered. They only thought about the negative and their comfort. Yeah. The master's priorities did not line up with their yeah. priorities. Mm -hmm. The servant comfort was only their priority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Church, don't let this be you. Don't be named among the Christians who decide to do things their way. Right. I said it before and I'll say it again. There are only two types of people in this world. Those who say, Lord, let thy will be done. Or those who say, what God says, let your will be done. So the question you have to ask yourself today, which one are you? Lord, let thy will be done. Or God says, let your will be done. Verse 26 says, his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou hast knowest what I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed, that thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges. Mm -hmm. And then at my coming I should have received my interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to those, the one with the ten. Now, right there, that's some preaching right there. See, what we want to do is take the one and give the one more yeah. for them to squander. When you have somebody working over here who's putting it to use, yeah. who's gaining interest. Mm -hmm. And many of us will say, well, he already got 10, but I know he's going to use what God has given him. But no, we in the flesh say, well, they need more. They didn't use what they already had. Well, I, I don't want to see them fall, so I, I got to give them more. Only for them to squander it. The devil is a lie. Verse 28 says, Take therefore the talent from him 